what was going on. Later on, she told me something that he told her that I spoke had said it to him. And I, I told her, she told me to ask me not to mention it. But I, I told my mama and a few other people what she said. And my mother told me, she said, no, don't you tell, you, you tell him. And tell her you can't you keep that kind of secret. So I called up and I told her. I said, that was a lie he told on me. And God knows it was a lie. And I, I talked to him. And ran from her. I said, why did you do that? I said, you, 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 can't, you can't go around and land on people talking to you over the Holy Ghost. Don't you know God's not going to hear that? And he's not going to say you that. You got to come to me and beg my pardon. I, I never said nothing to nobody if I called me a person a friend. Even if I wasn't supposed to be a friend. If I just knew that person, that's just not me. And so he was trying to hold on to it. And I just kept telling him, you telling this big lie, and God knows it, you know it. And went back to the woman. I, and when she first said it to me, I said, tell me, what do you believe? And she, well, I didn't believe. I said, yes, you did, because you started acting funny with me. And so it does, it does hurt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and maybe, I, I can't help if she, I don't know whether she believed everything was when I said something, something to her husband or not. I don't know. I don't know how that turned out. But I, I confronted him. I, I say, you told that, and you know it, and God knows it. And you know what you say like that. You, know, you may well stop calling on Jesus, because you, you call it on in vain. So anyway, I know some lies does hurt. That hurt me because it, it was not true. And it, I had never done anything like that in my life. Talking to him, talking to talk nobody's husband. But that lies, again, a lie hurts. And um, that wasn't the first lie. Elvin told me the first lie. That kind of lie. <laughs> and so it says, the, that's why, that's how Joseph got into prison from a lie that, that this man's wife told him. Mm -hmm. Same scenario. It said, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and loving kindness. And he gave him favor, which is grace in the sight of the warden in the prison. The 22nd grace in the warden of the prison he committed Joseph to care for all the prisoners who were in the prison. And whatever was done there, he was in, in he was in charge of it. He made no see he, the warden didn't believe that Joseph did anything either. So God God gave him favor in the in, in the warden's sight. And God in, in turn through the warden he could he committed to Joseph all the care of the other prisons. They was in, in Joseph's care. Who, the, all of the prisoners who's in, who were in the prison, the Bible says. Whatsoever was down there, he was in, in charge of it. Put, they put Joseph in charge of everything. Some, see, some things God, I think, I think the thing the majority of things God allows us to go through is all for us to get promotion. He promotes us. It doesn't seem like he's promoting at the time. It don't, it definitely don't seem like he, he's promoting. But you got to go through some things in order to get a promotion. And, and Joseph case. He was getting promoted. All the things he had said, he told his brother that he, that he was going to get over them one day. It never seemed like all this stuff was going to happen because all, all that it happened in, in the middle. God showed you, he made sure you the beginning. And he knows, God knows the end. But he will not tell you what, what's going to happen in the middle of all of that. And it, it won't even look like it. It, it, it looked like it looked like God didn't ever speak to you. God's working the most when you feel it the least. Again, I tell you, God's working the most when you feel it the least. So whenever you feel like God has forsaken you, He's not on my side. That's when He's working the most. Because it's not about a feeling. It's not about a feeling. It's about when you, when you feel, it's feel like God's far away from you. That's when He's right there next to you. So the enemy man wants us to feel that like God is far away. You feel you, he wants us to go by our feelings. Well, you feel that like God is far away because he is, but that he's a liar. Mm -hmm. Examples of grace. So the twenty, my last, my last verse, twenty-third verse. Surprise, surprise! This is my last verse. The prison, the prison warden paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge. For the Lord was with him mm -hmm. and, and made well, whatever he did to prosper. Look how God gave uh, Joseph favor through that war. Mm -hmm. When you put, some, sometimes I'm sure there's been those people that 
they have been locked up. Everybody's locked up now. They didn't, they didn't do anything the people accused them of. There's some answer people in, in prison today. The prison, the, he was locked up in the prison, but God gave him favor with the warden. He said the prison warden paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge. Uh -huh. And no matter what was said about Joseph, he didn't pay no attention to it. He still believed Joseph was a good man. Uh -huh. See, that's what we got to do. He'll put you in a situation where you, where you seem like you're, being, you're in trouble, so you're in trouble. But God will give you faith with those people. Uh -huh. God, does me God never meant for us to lose. He always causes us to triumph. He always causes us to, 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 to prosper. We, even when it looks like we're not going to prosper, prosper. God, uh, God always causes us to prosper. He said, Father, the Lord was with Joseph and made whatever Joseph did to prosper. So whenever you're in a tight situation uh -huh. and it seems like all hope is gone, you're coming out. Uh -huh. You're coming out of it. No matter how it seems, you're coming out of it. Uh -huh. and, and, it's, and sometimes it can be the most drastic things that happen. That'll happen. But job, you look back one day, because I don't care how old a uh, young person is now. If they live long enough, they're going to get to be 50, they might my age. If they live long, long enough, they're older than that. But ever. When I was in my 20s, you know, sometimes you can't see no point but which you are, the age you are then. And then, I, I mean, you sit and just meditate. Say, well, when we then we get in my 30s and 40s. And when I was in my 20s, people who was in their 40s seemed to be real old. And so when I was in my 50s, it seemed like people who was in their late 60s was real old to me. So it always seems like that. But do you get there? Mm -hmm. I mean, he got to have you, <laughs> he called you to have that same man to trust him. Just like you, if I trust him in my 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s, I trust him now, today. So I thank God for it. So now I'm in my 60s, and 60s don't seem so old because I'm, because I'm in my 60s. Mm -hmm. But I thank God that I'm in my 60s. Uh, but I thank God for this, 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 these verses on tonight. God always calls us to, uh, to, uh, to triumph and to prosper. And I don't care how deep, how bad it seems. Yeah. He'll put us in those situations mm -hmm. if we end up coming out of it. So, and then, I believe that God somehow has allowed some of the things to happen because I cared too much what people thought and I cared, to, you know, want to be friends with him and all this, you know. And so, he, he kind of, I believe one of the things he did, he allowed me to go through these things so I end up not caring. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, don't, I don't say that in the average way, an average way. But I say it in a thankful way because whenever we care too much about what people think mm -hmm. or what God thinks, God has pulled us out of there. But if we don't wake up one day, oh, and all of a sudden, oh, I don't care what people think. No, we have to go through it and mm -hmm. go through it and go through it to get there. Mm -hmm. And it'll seem like, it'll seem like you're, like you're arrogant and hard-hearted because I remember Bishop West telling me, he went on to be with Jesus, but I remember him telling me, <laughs> saying it was to the church. He said, from this night on, um, it had been you and not be concerned about what anybody says or thinks about you. And I didn't want him to say it right out before I get prayerful, but he did. Uh -huh. So he knew best. <clears throat> and I, did I feel in that way the next day? No. I still care. So I can't tell you the hour, the minute I was separate from dating, that, that all, that, all of those things came about. But I know that I can truly stand here. And now that I'm sitting here and tell you, I really, really don't care, care like I used to, uh -huh. what people think. I care to a certain extent, but I care as far as the word said, how, how the word said we all care. But not to the tone where I used to lay up at night, and, you know, <clears throat> and, and you don't want to be, people who treat, treat you funny won't be around. Oh no, I don't even think about that now. <clears throat> if somebody want to treat me funny, and I know he did that to him, and I know he's supposed to, Lord tell me and apologize. Even if, you ain't, if we haven't done anything that you know, I'm supposed to go to them and apologize. I've had certain people tell me that. But I come to a realization now that it really doesn't matter. Because if you live to be old enough, you you really don't have time to think about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't have time. I don't have that kind of time to sit around and worry about this person and worry about that person. Because, see, you got to let me see through all that. Mm -hmm. And God is bigger than that. What he has for me is bigger than that. 
dealing with anything I would have worried in vain about. 